Humanity's hopes lie on Mars. That's the premise of Kyokin Interactive's upcoming game, Deliver Us Mars. And we had the chance to go hands-on with the demo of the game ahead of its February 2nd release date. Hey there, friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming and our brutally honest first impressions of Deliver Us Mars. So the first thing I wanna make abundantly clear, the demo we had access to was two vertical slices of content from different parts of the game. Anything related to the story outside of some small moments of comms chatter was not included. And that makes sense because this game, like Deliver Us the Moon, its predecessor, is largely about story, exploration, and discovery. What this demo really got us comfortable with was a new setting, that being Mars, some of the interesting mechanics presented in the game, and the overall tone and direction of the action. I wanna start by level setting, because while we didn't get the full scope of the game with this short demo, there's enough we can glean from the various trailers and official website to let us know what to expect come launch. Deliver Us Mars is an atmospheric sci-fi adventure game. There's no combat, which means the adventure comes in the form of discovery. As the player, you have to complete puzzles, traverse the red planet, navigate through relics of the Ark Colony ship, all in an attempt to uncover the mystery of the red planet. In this genre, there are two games I like to point to as the gold standard, that being Firewatch, one of my absolute favorite atmospheric thrillers, and The Outer Wilds, a game I'll admit I didn't play until last year. What a mistake that was. Deliver Us Mars is a much more linear experience, and pseudo-sequel to the developer's first game, Ten years after the events of Deliver Us the Moon, humanity is closer than ever to extinction. After receiving a distress call from Mars, you join a small crew on a mission to recover the Ark Colony ship stolen by the mysterious Outward. The game will take you from Earth all the way up to Mars, where you discover the truth about the distress call's origins. That's as much as we know about the story, and honestly, let's keep it that way. The absolute best part about these types of games is how the story and the action unfold in real time for the player. What I wish I had gotten a better sense for was the performances of the characters. In the small interactions I did get to experience, I was wowed by the voice acting, but less so by the animations. The game touts some impressive motion capture technology, but I wasn't really wowed by those intimate person-to-person -person moments. Again, the demo didn't really highlight those things, and the various trailers have presented the characters and the actors in a slightly better light, but at the end of the day, I was playing the game and looking at this with my own two eyes, and I wasn't wildly impressed. The story and those human moments are great, and they're really the centerpiece to an experience like this. But in our hands-on with the game, we got to experience some of the important gameplay features that really helped define the adventure. First is one of the most unique climbing mechanics I've ever experienced in a game, well, ever. The concept is really neat. Your character has two climbing picks. As you attempt to scale various elements in the environment, you have to independently control when and where you move each arm. It's a fun twist on climbing in general, something we've done hundreds of times before in different games and really presents a simple concept in a unique way. Another aspect of the game we got a taste of were the puzzles. The first type of puzzle we experienced through the first person lens of our trusty floating robot companion. The goal is to simply align the various floating blocks to create a singular shape, and you do this by moving across the three axes until the puzzle is aligned. These are fun and simple and unlock clues to the story. The more challenging experience was what I can only describe as energy puzzles. These are all presented slightly differently, but the idea is to use stationary and mobile power platforms to link up energy beams and power up some sort of device. The end goal could be to unlock a door or power up a massive piece of technology. It varies. I will say, without any context, the puzzles took me a second to figure out. Like I mentioned earlier, we experienced two vertical slices of the game and clearly missed some sort of tutorial about how these work. I'll admit, figuring it out in real time was a doozy. As far as puzzles go, I wasn't exactly sold on the concept either. For one, the comically large energy beams really threw me for a loop and felt almost out of place. It also obscures vision, and as you're trying to navigate and see the whole picture, it just makes things challenging, but not the good kind of challenge, the annoying kind that's more of a hindrance than an organic challenge. Like any good atmospheric game, as soon as you complete a puzzle, you do feel a sense of accomplishment. A door unlocks, something happens in the world, and you can move on to whatever the next objective happens to be. What I didn't exactly love was the fact that the game almost ignores your progress. There are small bits of radio communication that don't always align with those major moments in the experience. For example, after powering up this massive piece of space technology, I was hoping for a bit more pomp and circumstance. It felt like a big moment in the adventure, and the payoff was a small door opening in the back of the room. 
I get it, we're stranded on a hostile planet, but still, a little reward for the effort would have gone a long way. The last real gameplay system I got to experience was taking control of that floating robot I mentioned before. It's interesting going from third person with our main character, then snapping into first person with the robot. Apart from the puzzles we just talked about, the robot is also a means to help the player untangle the mystery of Mars. You can toggle to the robot at any time and float around as you try and figure out how to solve for whatever challenge you're dealing with. The robot can also navigate ventilation areas and move objects the player cannot, so it does become an integral part of the experience. If you're struggling navigating the world, you can also use the robot to just scout out a path ahead, and I really enjoyed that aspect of the drone. Ultimately, I didn't find it detracted from my experience, only enhanced it, which I appreciated. Deliver Us Mars is one of those games that clearly isn't going to hold your hand, and while that might not be for everyone, it's kind of a staple of the genre at this point. There are no waypoints, very few environmental clues, and much like your situation, it's up to you to navigate the world. In the two missions we experienced, this was both frustrating and exhilarating. Did I die a handful of times? Absolutely. That's the trial and error loop the game sets up. Luckily, Deliver Us Mars is really forgiving when it comes to making mistakes, respawning you at a point right before your death. Amongst the puzzles and climbing, there are some really cool atmospheric moments that make the adventure feel more real. The team managed to pull this off quite a bit in their first game, so when it happened in Deliver Us Mars, that's when the experience came alive for me. Look, the bottom line is this, with just two vertical slices of the game, largely based on gameplay, it's hard to say whether or not Deliver Us Mars is worth picking up. What I can say is this, if you enjoy the type of unaided exploration this genre is known for, and you're okay with a more AA experience from a smaller studio, then you'll most likely love this game. Comparatively, Deliver Us the Moon was well received by the gaming community, and Deliver Us Mars just builds on that formula. The development team has expanded since the release of the first game, so I have to imagine we'll have an even more fulfilling experience come launch day. Deliver Us Mars releases on February 2nd for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. The game will cost you less than $30, and while we don't know how long the game is, Deliver Us the Moon, the first game, took around five hours to complete, so my bet is this is a quick play. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed our brutally honest impressions of Deliver Us Mars. If you want more impressions and worth your time reviews in your feed, consider subscribing to the channel. We've got a busy year on tap, and we're excited to share more content with you all in the near future. I also want to invite you to the Legacy Gaming community on Discord. We just recently revamped our entire server, and as a home to nearly 20,000 members, it's a great place to hang out, talk about games, win free stuff, and group up. As always, I'll leave that link in the description below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.